Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue, hello everybody, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else watching, thank you for tuning in to Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. So recently I was at a demonstration uh, put on by Magnapan. Um, I was invited by Thomas from Thomas and Stereo to come to Codel Audio. Codel's a beautiful dealer here in Montreal, visit if you have the chance. Uh, and uh, there was a Magnapan event, they wanted to show off their new subwoofer system. Or they call it a uh, ultra-wideband based system, not, not a subwoofer. Um, so, go to Codel Audio, and I guess there were three groups, uh, they had, you know, little time slots, and we uh, showed up at our uh, appropriate time. There was a nice spread of food and drinks there, and um, at the prescribed time we go into the listening room in the back. So it was a good sized listening room, um, fairly well damped, acoustically treated, but uh, on, on the debtor side. Uh, and there was about 12 or 15 of us in the room. And um, what we saw was a set of Martin Logan electrostatic speakers. Uh, there was a set of uh, shit uh, Vidar power amps. And then the Magnapan uh, base units uh, were set up up along the side walls, uh, just the outside of the main speakers. And what they were was a triangular pillar, about uh, 36 inches tall, maybe 8, 10 inches uh, long on, on the, the longest side of the triangle, and a little flat base. And it was a black tower covered with grill cloth, kind of pinned at the back, obviously a, a prototype or a working uh, prototype uh, pre-production version. And there was two of them. Um, so. Uh, the idea was that we were going to hear the system, uh, focus on the bass, and, and give some feedback uh, to, to what we heard. So he played uh, three tracks. There was a Japanese drum track, there was a orchestral piece, and then there was a piece by Diana Krall. So the first drum track, you know, I, I, sat, I was sitting in the front row. There was three or four rows of seating. I was right in the front row on that first uh, Japanese drum track. <laughs> uh, the volume was up and it was loud and impactful. I mean, I, I kind of jumped in my chair. It was, uh, it was uh, very surprising to hear that, that power out of that system. Um, bass was, I don't know if it, maybe it's not in the, in the material at all. It wasn't super deep. Um, it was extended, but it was very powerful, very uh, dynamic. Um, I mean, the, the sound started and stopped really quick. Um, you could hear the, the skin of the drums, you could hear the resonance of the drums, um, the, the impact on, on the skins, uh, the space around the drums. It was, uh, it was really detailed, very, very impactful. They had it quite loud and it was impressive to see the, uh, the volume and the, and the um, dynamics that were available from the system. Um, so they played that. And then they moved on to the orchestral track. Uh, and if you're listening to an orchestral piece and you've got a really solid uh, bass out of your system, what that gives you is uh, it really enhances the ambience, uh, the sense of the room. When the bass resonates in the room, you can really hear it and you really get a good sense of the hall size. So that was what was happening with this. There was a solo violin, and then the orchestra came in with the bass. The bass was really tuneful. You could hear the wood, you could hear the strings, you could hear the resonance, you could hear the echoes of the room. You could tell it wasn't a huge hall that it was recorded in, but it really gave a good sense of, uh, of ambiance. And the imaging was a little weird on this track. It kind of sounded like you were listening to the back of the orchestra. It was kind of like front to back. Um, the, the bass was more forward and the, the rest of the orchestra and the solos was kind of further behind so it had a little strange presentation like that but uh, the uh, bass in that system was uh, in that track was, was certainly impressive. Uh, the third track they played was a Diana Krall piece um, and apparently he selected this because Diana Krall has done the or the, the music of Diana Krall is, is featured prominently in uh, audio shows I don't have any Diana Krall music, I don't listen to her very often, so I wasn't familiar with the piece. So I uh, didn't have that going for it, but I did hear the track. The bass was powerful. Uh, it was lumpy though. Um, I Some notes were loud, other notes were quiet, uh, and I, it was probably my position in the room. You know, I was 
closer to the front and the speakers were you know, not that far away from me. And that's one of the hardest things to get is uh, to have even bass in your room. I know I, I played around in my own room for a long time to try to get that even bass uh, before I figured out where to put my speakers. So with this show coming in and, and demonstration being set up at Codell probably just that day, it wasn't uh, easy to get an ideal set up for everyone in the room. So I, I did notice that bit of a lumpy uh, bass presentation. The, the, her voice was um, had had body certainly, but uh, it was it was harsh and it wasn't uh, it wasn't really pleasant to listen to. It wasn't my, my favorite track of the demonstration. Um, but after the end of the third track, there was the big reveal that we had been listening to only the uh, Magnapan ultra wide band bass system. Uh, so the Martin Logans were not even hooked up. We we're listening to only the sound coming out of the mag of the Magnapan subwoofers, for us, I mean, basically. And so the idea is they call it ultra wideband bass system and it can do a huge range of frequencies, not just bass. So we were hearing everything coming out of those speakers and, uh, you know, very impressive given those, <laughs> given that consideration for sure. Um, and I, I can appreciate what they're doing. I mean, you want to have, um, Ideally, if you have a component, you want it to cover a lot more than the range in which it's designed for. Um, for example, I have uh, my power amp here is 300 watts per channel. I only use two or three watts normally when I'm listening. I listen to 65, 75 dB. And, you know, the amp is just operating in a in its very small range of its capabilities, but that gives it a much better sound. It's very linear, has a lot of dynamics um, because it's just using a part of its uh, capabilities. And certainly with a, a bass system, if it has an extended frequency range and it goes way high up, then you know it's going to integrate well with the speakers. It's going to be very linear in its response up through the crossover point and, you know, as it slopes down as well. So I really appreciate uh, what they're trying to do with that. Subsequently, they hooked up the Martin Logans. Uh, this didn't have the, the base units. The, the woofers were actually removed in there, so it was just the electrostatic panel. And they put in some uh, crossovers, so they low-passed the uh, Magnapans, and then they played the three tracks again, and the integration was very good. The focus was to get a base system that integrated well with Magnapans or with any other speaker that's exceptionally fast. And then hearing the tracks again, the imaging was fixed the, the, the higher end was more extended and a lot smoother a lot more pleasant to listen to and uh, it really did demonstrate that there was a lot of power on tap they started and stopped very quickly really nice sound uh, that matched uh, what a fast speaker is going to do now from my understanding they're going to have uh, a couple tiers of this maybe this is the premium version might even come with a dsp of some sort uh, to help it integrate um, because they're not big towers, they won't be hard to place in a room, but uh, I wonder, since they are ultra-wideband and they are extending further up, uh, I wonder if you're going to have to put them in a place where it's um, kind of a line of sight, where you, you can hear them directly if they're covering a, a greater f range of frequencies, and they are stereo, so you'll need kind of a matched pair. You know, I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, correctable with uh, DSP. Um, but certainly to hear anything of this power dynamics and bass extension uh, coming from Magnapan is uh, just un unprecedented. I've never heard anything like that associated with their name. So uh, uh, an impressive demonstration. So this bass system was stunningly powerful, fairly detailed, uh, extremely quick and well up to the task of integrating with Magnapan speakers or any other quick speakers. Their small footprint will make them easy to place in the room. They're unobtrusive, certainly not like a big Magnapan panel, um, but since they do produce ultra wideband sound, maybe they'll have to be placed in line of sight so you can hear everything coming out of them. And there's a stereo pair, so they kind of should be, you know, symmetrical in the room. So just some considerations, not sure what the final implementation is going to be, if there's going to be some DSP or some other filters that allow you to, to play with the positioning. But uh, no word on pricing or availability. Hopefully I'll get some more news on that and they'll be able to report back to you then. 
So that's the coverage of my MagnaPan experience. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please click the like button. Uh, please subscribe. I've got uh, more videos coming and it'd be great to uh, up my subscriber count. If you want to join Patreon, you can help me uh, obtain some more equipment to review for you. Also, I'm going to be placing sound clips that I can't show on YouTube, uh, you know, popular music and stuff. Uh, that'll be on my Patreon page. So uh, if you don't want to join Patreon, I'll have that available for you there as well. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.